welcome back. It's still the run-up. And uh, before we went on the break, we did say that it's something of concern that almost on a daily basis as it is, because before we finish uh, mourning the dead in one incident, we almost have another one uh, happening in Lagos. And I'm talking about the building collapse that happens so frequently in Lagos, and we're worried about that. Are there things that can be done to make sure that these things do not happen anymore? 10% of the population of Nigeria lives in Lagos, and this shouldn't be a place that we will not get it right, especially when it comes to housing. And that's why we are glad to have in the house here the former uh, secretary of the Nigerian Institution of Civil Engineers and the chief executive officer of Top Engineering Construction Company Limited in the person of engineer Friday Chuku. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's just go straight to the point. Um, building collapse in Lagos and in Nigeria at large, but we are zeroing in on Lagos because this is uh, our area right now. Uh, what really are the challenges that m make this possible? Why can't we just build buildings that will stand the test of time? Okay, thank you once again. Um, yeah, it's really a big problem in Nigeria, um, especially in Lagos where the incidence of um, building collapse is so frequent that uh, people may almost lose count because um, just this year alone we have had two already, two collapses, building collapses in Lagos. So um, it's a big problem and not just the, 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 mat the material loss that uh, we experience, the, 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 the inconvenience, the emotional trauma and everything, but also the, the, the fatalities involved, the loss of lives, like the two building collapses that have happened this year alone. We have lost one person. One, somebody had you know, died in one of the collapses. So it's a, it's a, it's a big problem. And um, there are a lot of factors that, that cause building collapse in, in, in Nigeria, ranging from poor workmanship, ranging from um, uh, materials, the quality of materials, the standard of the materials, uh, ranging from poor um, uh, 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 supervisory uh, activities from the regulatory agencies, you know, uh, insufficient use of, you know, uh, untrained professionals, I mean, use of people who are not trained to do the, 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 the building, you know, using wax. Everybody now is like, uh, the building industry is like an all-commerce affair. Anybody, carpenter can be, you know, can be engaged to start building. Uh, electrician can be engaged to start building. Even a trader are uh, made supervisors over uh, building projects. So it's, it's, it's a huge problem and, you know, uh, 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 qualified professionals are not involved in most cases, in most of these cases. Yeah, the, let, me shock you. Okay. let me shock you that among all the collapses we have been hearing, less than 10% of them involved registered and qualified professionals. So you can see it has been all along a field, a field, a field play for quacks. Now, what, the what my question is, what, what category of people or manpower must, uh, and I'm using that word with emphasis, must be the professionals? Because when you're talking about building, there are people who go to the building side that in my layman's thinking, do not necessarily have to be professionals as, as it were. So what category of people on the site of any building must be professionals? And that is exactly the problem. What you said now, do not necessarily have to be professional. I mean, if I'm carrying, Every, I'm carrying cement with, <laughs> with a headpan or something. It doesn't make you a professional. I don't have to go to school. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't show that you, you've undertaken the training mm -hmm. of how to er erect a building from foundation to the various floors, to the roof, and then to finish. It doesn't, it doesn't follow. It's just like your profession now. 
would you want anybody, can anybody just come up and mount this uh, seat and start uh, interviewing people? Okay, it's no, not my, possible. My, my question so, is that, like in my profession now, I have groundsmen that will have to move the seats, will have to uh, sweep the place and all that. They don't have to go to read mass communication, for instance, or have any training. So in the buildings, uh, there must be some people that, well, maybe because the professionals are there, they can supervise them well. But these categories, we need to know them so that we know that even if you're failing in having professionals, this one, it has to be a professional so that the rest will fall in place. Now, let me tell you that there are categories in the building process, uh, the categories of workmen involved, categories of professionals, categories of, you know, the, the generality of the, the workforce. Yeah. Now, you have at the echelon, at the you know, you have the professional, the, the, the person already trained who had gone to university and been trained to, you know, uh, uh, do that job. Yeah. You know, both the theory and the practical, they have passed through that. Then uh, there are also those under them. We call them the technologists. Yeah. You know, those ones are like people with OND, HND, you understand. Then we also have beyond them, be, you know, below, we have the artisans or the skilled labor. Yeah. Then that's where you have uh, uh, carpenters, bricklayers, uh, electricians, and stuff. Then even also below them, you also have laborers, the kind of people you are talking about, laborers. Those ones, they don't have any skill. They don't have any skill at all. You just call them, hey, bring, mix that cement. Mix, mix uh, uh, one bag of cement, pour yeah. uh, eight bags, eight, eight uh, headpans of sharp sand, pour nine headpans of uh, granite, uh, pour uh, half half bucket of water inside and mix and carry and go. Those are the lowest okay. cadre. You can't call them, they are not professional. In fact, among all these professionals, we can call the skilled ones, the medicines, some of you can, we can at, refer to them as professional skilled, if they are skilled. They have undergone training or tutelage under a professional or under uh, a training institute. You know, you know, we have some training institute where artisans are trained. You know, uh, there's NDE training institute where they train artisans. And there are also other uh, uh, colleges where technologists are trained, like uh, polytechnics and other colleges. Then apart from that, if they have undergone tutelage and training under a qualified professional for years and they have been certified, they become skilled laborers or skilled artisans. So all, right. all of them <laughs> all right, Mr. must Mr. work Mr. together. Mr. Chuku, well, it's an eye-opener. And I okay. think when we will take a break and get the news, when we return, the crux of the matter is what are we doing wrong? Why are these people who should not be on site on site? Mm -hmm. What can the next government that is coming do to make sure that this is addressed? So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take that break, and after the news, Engineer Chuku will tell us the possible policies that can make uh, building a strictly professional thing, and then they will become safer for us to dwell in. Uh, let us uh, start off this way, Mr. Friday. So, you, you, while you were speaking earlier, you mentioned how that, you know, there are regulatory bodies and, uh, you know, um, like supervisory situations or supervisory people who are supposed to be in those sites uh, to make sure that things go well and things go in place. The conversation around inferior building materials might probably have happened another day. But now we're looking at policies that should be put in place to make sure that things go well in the building sites as they are supposed to. Uh, uh, how do you, how do you think that the regulatory bodies can nip this problem in the board? Okay. Um, when we talk of policies, I don't think we are, we are in short of policies in Nigeria everywhere. 
So in the building sector, um, this thing falls squarely on the regulatory NGA agencies. That's um, in Lagos, they call them LASCA, Lagos Building, Lagos State Building Control Agency. And then uh, they are the, the main agency that, you know, sees to the, to the uh, um, good health of buildings. Let me put it like that. You know, that buildings are well constructed and they, they, they are durable. They stand the test of time. It's, for me, it, it falls squarely on Lasca in Lagos. Then in other states in Nigeria, they also have building agencies, building control agencies. These are uh, uh, departments of governments, you know, charged with the responsibility of monitoring. First of all, they will, they will approve the designs because you do your designs, you, you take it to them, they will approve it, the structural, the mechanical, the electrical, you know, uh, the, all the various designs that you need in a building. They, 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 they will approve. So uh, after that, they now monitor the construction. But you, as a client, as a person who wants to be, you must inform them. These are some of the things that people don't know. You must inform them that, hey, I want to start my build. You have approved my building plan or plans. Now I want to start it. You give them one week's notice. Give the regulatory agencies one week's notice that you want to start up. That is to prepare them to be able to follow you up to monitor the construction. So now, once that is done, it is now their duty to follow up on the construction, the, the construction process. By the way, building construction is a gamut of processes. So it's not just you move from stage to stage, from this stage to that stage, from this stage to, to that stage. So each of those stages must be monitored for the building to be, to be healthy or to be safe, you know. So you start from the foundation stage. When you are doing your foundation, the regulatory agencies must come to come and check that the reinforcement, that the iron and the mix of the concrete everything is according to specification or design. Because all these things are well designed by qualified professionals. They will say, for one bag of cement, you can only put two headpans of sand and eight headpans of granite. That is the mix. So if that design specifies that, that is what you must use. If you go and use 10 headpans of sand, and 15 headpans of uh, granite to, to one bag. You have started failing. The building has already started failing. Our concern, so, our concern <coughs> right now is that, is it that these regulatory bodies are not doing their job? Because if they know they are, they, are, they are the professionals and they are supposed to be there to supervise and they are there, buildings should not collapse the way they are collapsing. Is it that they are not doing their job? Because the next government that will come has to sit up. Because like you've said, it is not the policies that we lack. It's not the laws that we lack. They are there. But if these things are not being done, those are the things that we need to highlight. Is it that okay. they don't do it? No, they, they, they do. I, 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 have to, I also have to point out here that uh, most of these regulatory agencies don't have enough hands. Mm. And I, have to, I also have to say here that some of them, some of their staff, are not uh, registered and qualified. So only few of them are really qualified. Yeah, so the rest, idea. the rest, really the rest, they, they are like, uh, you know, uh, staff that support, support staff that help them. So, they, but they still train them. They still talk to them and tell them the right thing to do when they go to sites. Do you understand? But they, they always go also with a professional. So they are understaffed. Lapska, for instance, are understaffed. But that is not an excuse, though, because there are, there are other things that they can do. There are other bodies. There's a, a body called Building Collapse Prevention Guild. 
their, 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 their advocacy is just on building, to make sure buildings are you know, done safely in, in Lagos, in fact, across Nigeria. So they are willing to collaborate with you know, these government agencies across board. So these government agencies, government know about BCPG, and we have been talking with them on collaboration. So we understand that they are understaffed. So, um, and we are ready. We, we, they are not saying employ them as, and start paying them salary, no. They are just saying, you know, recognize and put them in. If there are logistics issues, you know, to go to this, city, you okay. just take care of it. Okay. And, that, and that's that. that. That just shows that, you, to say you are willing, it shows yeah. that it shows that the collaboration has not really begun. Well, yeah. Bayo, I, I leave him, to, we leave him to you. Um, Mr. Chuku is still here, so let's hear from you. Actually, I, I wanted to just, um, yeah, I, I wanted to just uh, pose to Mr. Chuku a question as a follow-up to, yes. to the one he's just responded to. Uh, there are those who suggest that the sheer size of construction projects in Lagos is way too many for the supervising or regulatory bodies to effectively monitor. For example, if you look at the Lekki axis, and Lekki is, whether true or false, Lekki is said to be the fastest piece of real estate, the fastest developing piece of real estate on the continent of Africa. Today, now, if you look at the number of uh, staff in the ministry in Lagos or the building uh, regulatory agency, can they even monitor the number of construction projects in Lekki alone? So there are those who feel that, if you agree with this question and your perspective will be interesting, there are those who suggest that it's high time that the government also engages with private professional bodies to also carry out inspection rather than only limiting it to civil servants what's your reaction to that exactly this is 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 like um you have an idea of what we have been doing behind you know behind the scenes and um we have been talking with with government we know you know i said it earlier that they are understaffed we know that so um and we also know that uh, the government doesn't have all the money to employ too many people, you know, uh, also. So uh, the only option, one of the options is what he has just said, collaborating with uh, other professional uh, bodies, such as BCPG, such as uh, uh, Nigerian Society of Engineers, such as Nigerian Institute of Architects, such as uh, Nigerian Institution of Civil Engineers, collaborating with them. They are not asking for monies. They are just asking for logistics support. Like if we want to visit sites, just provide the vehicles or provide the logistics that we need to use to go and visit those sites and make our reports. And once we visit sites and make reports, act on them because it's only the government, LAFCA, that have the authority to act, to really implement. Other professional bodies, we don't have that power. It's only now that uh, uh, President uh, Buhari just did something close to empowering us a little bit, you know, from the distance. Uh, this executive order seven that you mentioned and the executive order five. Those two executive orders try to bring in professionals, even private professionals, you know, to to have the uh, you know power to go to sites and see what people are doing. So, but if, if there's no support, no logistic support, you know it will be difficult for individuals to just walk up and go there. Then, on the, on the agencies, let me say something. Yes, because of the understaffed nature, there are things they can do. They should, you know, uh, 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 upgrade their ICT infrastructure or their ICT departments. These days, you don't need to be even physically there to, to supervise. 
Yes, there is, there is a technology tool now that we, we, you know, that we call BIM, BIM, Building uh, uh, Information Modeling. Okay, Building Information Modeling. You can use that. With that, you do your planning, you do your monitoring, you do your organization and all that. Then, apart from that, these days, drones have become a, a, a very a, a good tool to achieve, to do so many things. We can, if, if they are able to, to, to develop their ICT infrastructure, they can do far more than they are doing now. And they can cover far more than they are covering now. So, I would also say that if they are listening, if government is listening, they should expand their ICT infrastructure and explore this beam, this new beam technology. It's, a new, it's an upcoming new technology. And even drones. You can use drones to support your, your monitoring. So that is what is there. Because there's, there, there's, and there's no fear that those things will not take over human jobs. No. You are already understaffed. So the, those of you who are there shouldn't fear that if you introduce all these technologies, you won't, they, they won't, they, you know, you'll be sacked. No, nobody will sack you because you are already not enough. And we must require human hands anyway, because it is human hands that we manipulate and operate those tools. So that, that would be part of it. And looking at solution, are we now looking yes, at looking. other solutions? Please, let me also advise our people. When you want to start your building, starting from design, don't use quacks. Don't use um, um, draftsmen to do your design. You say, ah, this design, uh, that engineer is asking for 300,000. This draftsman, 50,000, yeah, give it to him. Don't do that. You are endangering your life and other people's lives. That's why we are. Last year alone, we had 84 deaths from building collapse. Is that small? Now, about and 113 injuries from building collapse alone. Because we want to save 200,000 or 300,000. You see the problem we, we, are, we are seeing. And once you are building collapses, forget it in Lagos, that building will be, will be, de will be demolished and become government property. You see? So it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't pay you to, to avoid professionals. And then the other reason why you must use professionals is because they, they are accountable. All those people, uh, mechan uh, all those um, uh, bricklayers, carpenters, traders that you use to supervise, they, 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 they are not accountable. If anything happens on that site, nobody will hold them responsible. It is only the engineers, the professionals that are registered, that are held responsible. They are accountable. And I will also advise government again, those culprits that have been responsible for building collapses that we have seen in Lagos and outside Lagos across Nigeria, they should be brought to book so as to, you know, form a, a deterrent to others okay. because we keep hearing you know the building collapses and then sometimes some are taken to court and that's the end you don't hear about it again let us see people being prosecuted and people being put to jail for this you know okay. failures and collapses okay that in, is what we want in Chuku, thank you uh, if we <clears throat> if we continue talking anything that has to do with loss of life we, it, it will take us like the whole day because we want to dig and dig and find out what really is happening but all we've heard here today is we need a government with the right political will because like he said there are, all, there are policies that are in place, there are laws that are in place and all that, but the political will may not be there. Yes, we understand. Indira Chuku was being very mild and diplomatic. We understand that the government agencies may be understaffed, but 
the fact that he was still talking about their stock going on, they're still trying to col collaborate and all that, means that it has not been concretized. I think another question we need to ask is, why is an agency like that very critical, mm. understaffed? Well, the government cannot pay everybody to be there. Like, like, Mr. like, like Bayo said, uh, the wood rate of building only in Lekki will be so much so that you might need to employ like a million people <laughs> before you can take care of all that. But that brings the suggestion he brought as well. Private individuals, why not identify them and give them mandate to do what you cannot be there to do. If you see something, say something. That's what the police say. And mm -hmm. we have to police uh, how our buildings are being built. Because we live in there, and our friends and relatives live in there. Yes, and, and sorry. Just finally. Yes. yes. So finally, engage professionals, number one. Then if you're a professional, do your job well, professionally. And uh, then government should also collaborate with uh, other professional agencies. There is also a Nigeria Consortium and Infrastructure Summit Group, which is also championing building and infrastructural development in this country. Right. Government can, you know, collaborate with them to make sure that we sanitize the yeah. construction and building industry. Well, in some, sometimes your own people could uh, do the wrong thing. I hope that you too will have the will part. Yeah, yeah that's why I said if you're a professional, make sure anyway. you do your job well. If we, if we keep <laughs> having this conversation, we might never end like Nyango said, but we are, we are very much out of time. Thank you so much. Uh, this is where we draw the curtain on today's edition of the Run-Up. Thank you so much, Mr. Chukwidi, for uh, coming on the program. The Run-Up will return, but it will be tomorrow. Uh, do not forget that we also had Mr. Bayo Oluwake join us today. Uh, until tomorrow, my name is Uche Chuku Onodo. Go ICT, government, when you're talking about building. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Bye for now. <laughs>